Well, good afternoon. This is Pastor Jay. I'm sorry I'm a few minutes late. It's been a very busy morning here at Christ Church. I have lots of things going on as we get ready for our Breakthrough Prayer Initiative and the other things that are going on. But I'm glad you've chosen to join with me for this time of devotion, whether it's here at noon or uh, at another time when you're watching on our Facebook page. You know, in our United Methodist Hymnal, we have a lot of different styles of music. You know, we try to incorporate songs from a variety of traditions. As many of you know, I'm very interested in Native American culture, and we have a lot of Native American hymns. But several of our uh, hymn songs come from the Hispanic tradition. This is one of them. I only have the first verse in the book that I have here, though. But when the poor ones who have nothing share with strangers, when the thirsty water give unto us all, And when the cripples in their weakness strengthen others, then we know that God still goes that road with us. Then we know that God still goes that road with us. sing that one more time. When the poor ones who have nothing share with strangers, and when the thirsty water give unto us all, and when the crippled in their weakness strengthen others, Then we know that God still goes that road with us. Then we know that God still goes that road with us. I've always loved that uh, pretty little hymn, uh, Condo El Pobre, is its title in Spanish. But when the poor ones who have nothing. Uh, I've moved my guitar stand. I'm not sure where to put my guitar. But let's have a word of prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for this day and this chance to gather together, to sing a couple songs, to reflect on your word, and to grow together in faith. I pray that you would bless us in our time together. You'd be with any who have need today and that your grace and peace would be upon them. And we ask it today, O oh God, as always, in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture I wanted to read today is actually one of my favorite passages of Scripture. There's a variety of reasons for it. It's, a, it's somewhat of a long one, though. Uh, it's often read uh, around Easter. It's an Easter story, a, a resurrection story. It occurs right after the resurrection, as a matter of fact. It's found only in Luke's Gospel. It's called The Walk to Emmaus. It begins in the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verse 13. It says, Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And talking with each other about what happened, about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who would redeem Israel. 
Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that he was that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When, it was, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened on the road and how he had made known, been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Word of God for the people of God. As I mentioned, that's always been one of my fav, favorite stories. It's a story, again, that reminds me of the importance of the sacrament. It's a story that was a part and part of my call as I participated in a group called the Work, Walk to Emmaus uh, early on as a lay person. And then in the midst of that, my, my call to ministry manifested itself. But the thing I've always liked about it, I think, was it was a reminder that after the resurrection, that Jesus journeys with us, that he walks with us. He's, he's there among us. And he, as he walks with us, our, our hearts can begin to burn within us. It reminds me of a little bit of a story about a certain woman who was on vacation in Florida. And she was walking along the beach one day, and she came to a little boy who seemed to be lost. And the boy, of course, was obviously you know, quite upset. And he told the lady that he couldn't find his way home. And so the woman took him by the hand and said, Well, son, I'll take you to your home, but, but how will we find the way there? And the boy replied, Ma'am, you just start walking, and I'll tell you when we get there. And I think about that as far as our walk with Jesus. You know, we're wanting to find our way home. We're wanting to find that, that place of security. We're wanting to experience God's presence anew in our lives and in the life of our community of faith. And so we're on this journey with Jesus. And in some respects, we're like the little boy. We, we, we're kind of lost. We're not really sure where we're, we're going. And as we come along the beach, it's like Jesus comes beside us and said, you know, uh, can I take you home? Can I show you the way? And we say, well... Yeah, you can. Well, well, where is it? And so, well, let's just start walking, and we'll know when we get there. I think that's how it is with Christ. And the way we walk with Jesus today, again, through worship, sharing in the sacrament, of course, as I talked about on Sunday, but one of the main ways we walk with Jesus is in our prayer life together. I walk with Jesus by talking to Jesus. I offer my prayers to Jesus. I, I pray and he comes into my life and we begin our journeying together. And just as those first disciples after the resurrection, Cleopas and his companion, we, we walk along and Jesus begins teaching us and, and talking to us and showing us the way. And our hearts begin to burn uh, with joy as we come to that understanding, as we begin to know we're, we're getting where we are going. You know, here as we begin next this Sunday, our, our Breakthrough Prayer Initiative, I think that's part of what we're looking to do, is looking to, to pray as a church community, coming together to pray for Jesus to walk with us and to show us the way. And we'll know when we get there because we'll see it. That's kind of what Breakthrough Prayer is about. It's about praying to have the Holy Spirit in Jesus to break through in our lives and then open our eyes to, to what he's doing and what he would like us to do. 
and to allow us to see that and then to follow that. Just as those disciples' eyes were opened as, as Jesus gathered with them in the breaking of the bread, his presence and their connection with him is what opened their eyes to what was going on. And this Breakthrough Prayer Initiative is a way in which we will pray intentionally to have our eyes opened, to see what God is calling us to do, to see where we are to, to be in helping build his kingdom. And I'm so excited about it. You'll see more about it through our Facebook and emails as we begin this 28-day prayer experiment uh, starting this Sunday, September 10th. But the idea of it is so that we can journey together with one another, just like Cleopas and his companion did, and allow Jesus to come through the Spirit to, to walk with us and to empower us and to strengthen us as we seek to, to follow him more closely. So I hope you will join us in that initiative. And again, just as my walk to Emmaus experience helped lead to my call to ministry where I'm now a pastor, I believe this prayer experiment might do the same for you, that through intentional prayer and this activity, you might come to connect with God in a very special and, and real way. And so I hope you will join us in that activity together. In closing today, I wanted to share another hymn from our United Methodist hymnal. We, we sang it on Sunday. I've been singing it a lot. I think maybe because of the fact we're doing this prayer initiative. I've been thinking a lot about prayer, and my grandmother's favorite hymn was What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and it, it talked to us about the importance of prayer. sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer and oh what peace we often forfeit and oh what needless pain we Because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Our heavy laden comfort with a load of care precious Savior still our refuge take it to the Lord in prayer do thy friends despise forsake thee take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And oh, what peace we 
often forfeit And all the needless pain we bear All because we do not care Everything to God in prayer And now, my sisters and brothers, as we travel along life's journey, as we make our journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus, wherever that may be, may we know that Jesus walks alongside us, and may we open our hearts and minds through prayer to allow him to guide us and to reveal himself to us, just as he did with those first disciples long ago. May you go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.